This story is set many miles from here, on the coast of New England, in the year 1691. A year in the history of America many would wish to forget. Oh. It involves a young girl, not 18 years of age, left suddenly alone in the world. Oh, uh, pardon me, but is the cat... Hey, there's ten oh. ton and a half here! Oh. A young girl flung upon a course of events wholly unthinkable not one month before. Pardon me? Hey. Captain Holderness, I'm waiting for him. Will he be much longer? Uh, can't say. The hold's crammed. It's all got to be put ashore. For if she'd been told she would cross the wide Atlantic in a ship full of strangers to land on a strange shore where she was to live for the rest of her short life. How it is like the voyage, eh? Let's get thy sea legs at last. <laughs> For good, I think. Uh, I feel the rocking beneath me uh, still. Uh, I, I tell the captain where you be, don't fret. This one will drop with the dawn. If she'd been told all this, she wouldn't have believed it possible. But then, how could she have known that within one short month, her father would be dead and her mother stricken by the same fever? Oh, mother... My poor Lois. My father gone, and now... Oh. Hearken to me. I have a brother. He left years ago for New England. He'll take thee in. I've written to thy father's old friend, Captain Holderness. He'll guard thee on the journey. Oh. Promise me thou wilt go, Lois. Promise me. And she did. And with that promise... She lost all whom she loved, and who loved her. Lois, I vow I will work and prosper, and wherever ye be on God's earth, I will come for thee as soon as I can. I hear, and I will wait for thee. Do, for I will. I will come for thee, Lois. I will come for thee, Lois. Lois. But now it was only the voices of ghosts that could comfort her, as she sat listening to the wind on Boston Pier, over 3,000 miles from home. Lois? 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 Hey, Lois! Oh. <laughs> I'm dreaming, lass. Come, to the good day's journey, and the sooner we find means to get there, the better. <laughs> What is the town called, Captain, where my uncle lives? Does not know. Oh. A new home, Lois, is called Salem. May the Lord protect and keep us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Forest draws close up ahead. Keep your eyes peeled at the back there. Aye, I'm watching. What are they frightened of, Captain? Ah, never you mind, lass. Rest your head on my shoulder. Try to sleep. Art new to the country then, lass? Yes. Ah? Well, I'll tell thee, for thou ought to know. It's Indians have got to watch for, lurking in the dark of the trees. Aye, you must be on your guard. These red men are the evil creatures we read of in Holy Scripture. In league with those damned papists, I shouldn't wonder. Yeah, they're flesh and blood like you and me. They bleed if they're scratched. Speak not lightly of Satan's powers. I know there are seeming men who are in truth demons, permitted to roam about the waste places of the earth. Can this be true? Yeah. You'll have to get used to talk like this, lass. They're a queer set, these New Englanders. These painted savages. They're in league with Satan to fright us from the country he's ruled so long. Well, it's not safe to go far into the woods, true. And the Indians hate the white man. And with good reason, since their hunting grounds have been taken without a by your leave. Nay, Holy Scripture itself speaks of the power of the evil one in desert places. And of the power of witches. Oh, oh aye, witches. We've heard tell of them, even in the old country. We had a witch once, in Barford when I was little. Oh, I know. I felt quite sorry for her. 
No one knew where she came from, but she settled in a mud hut by the common and lived there all alone except for a cat. Ah, oh, a familiar. Now, was she condemned at last? Well, it did happen that soon after she arrived, many a one fell sick in the village, though I never heard much about it. My father said it was ill talking about such things. What was that? Uh, a bird. I saw him fly across the track. It was no red Indian, mistress. Take comfort. <sighs> Deliver us from evil, Lord, and make thy light to shine upon us. Amen. 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 So, what happened to this old woman in your village, lass? Well... All I remember is, one afternoon, the maid was taking me through a meadow where the Avon makes a deep pool, and up ahead there was a crowd of folk all staring. And the maid lifted me up so I could see, and there was old Hannah in the water, her grey hair streaming out and her cat tied round her neck. But she caught sight of me and cried, Parsons went yonder in thy nurse's arms. She was half drowning as she spoke. She said... Thy father never tried to save me, and none shall save thee when thou art brought up for a witch. My mind misgives me. The hellish witch might have had power from Satan to infect her mind. Here, I call upon you all to join with me in prayer that her heart may be purged from all iniquity. Well, there's no harm in that. But while you're at work, just pray for us all, Pastor. For I'm afraid there may be some need purging from iniquity, a good deal more than Lois Barclay. And so it was that Lois made her entry into Salem and was brought at last to the door of her uncle's home. Good evening to you. Is this Ralph Fixon's house? It is. Well, this is his niece, Lois Barclay. You'd better come in. Right, go on, sir. Mother, there's someone here who claims kin. I heard. But I know nothing of any niece. Here is a letter from his sister. Is Master Hickson at home? My husband is dead these last two weeks. Oh, I'm truly sorry to hear it. Then perhaps you might read the letter. No longer the object of her aunt's hard, cold stare, Lois felt able to look round and observe the room. Its stark bareness offered her little comfort, and when she caught her cousin, Manasseh's eyes furtively watching her, she felt more uncomfortable still. How m many years has she? I think she can speak for herself, Lois. I am 17 years old. So, you are the child of my husband's brother, who took oaths to the papist Charles Stuart and stuck by his living when all godly men left theirs. But they might have been godly, those who left their churches, but those who stayed were too. You cannot limit godliness to those you agree with. Well said, lass. Mother... It's ill speaking of such matters when my cousin comes first among us. They both have travelled from Boston City today and, and must need rest and food. What Manasseh says is true. Come, be seated. Faith, put baby Joseph in his cot. And you and Natty prepare some meat and flour cakes for our visitors. Nay. Hey. No tears now, lass. You're tired. You'll feel better when you've eaten. Grace Hickson made provision for Lois to join her family, though she at no time made any show of affection towards the girl. She was to share a bed with Faith, a young girl of about the same age as herself, and to help Natty, the old servant, to prepare meals in the kitchen. While her aunt told her these arrangements, another daughter, Prudence, a girl of about twelve years old, darted about making faces at Lois behind her mother's back, while Manasseh, with his deep-set eyes and his dark, tangled hair, sat silent, like some brooding animal in the corner of the room. The next morning, the captain took his leave of the family, and taking Lois aside, spoke words of encouragement to her. You'll take to them, lass. 
may be, when I'm not here to make you think of the old country. Oh. Nay, nay. Part in his hard work at the best of times, so none of that. I'll come back and see you next spring. Eh? And who knows what fine young man may come with me, eh? <laughs> there, there. I'm off. God bless you. And he departed. And Lois was left alone. Oh! Well, this baby never stops! Hey, give him to Lois. And you help Natty. Yeah. Come here, little one. La, 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 now thy father is dead, you are head of this house. I, I mind. Oh, I will go hunting. Natty, fetch the la, flowers from the la, 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 Oh, hush, Prudence, you'll rouse the baby. Just like my brother, cousin. Uh, no, not the baby. I mean, the other one. <laughs> Oh, pretty boy, la, going la, off to la, sleep. La, la, la. Prudence, why did you do that? You can make some flower cakes for the meal. Oh, dear me, he's howling worse than ever. Now give him to me. Oh, oh. Well, don't just stand there, girl. Look at the floor. Go find the brush. And so she lived from day to day with much strangeness about her. And on the rare occasions when she could leave the house, on some household errand, she could not avoid glimpsing the dark, dreary wood hemming in the town on all sides. <coughs> Where she had heard tell, the Indians lay in wait for some unsuspecting traveller. <laughs> Natty? Is that you? <laughs> you run. <laughs> you see snake with two heads, eh? No. <gasps> what? What is it? Ah. You see snake with two heads. You look in eyes, you lost. You lowest no more. What do you mean? He cast spell. He make you go into forest, look for Indian man, and make you beg to go with him, and no one see you again. <gasps> this, this is just a story, a fable. No, there's spells hidden on ground that change you if you step on them. Change you? How? They take your spirit, turn you bad. There's one here. They caught one here. Who do you mean? Shh. What's been spoken? Natty, why are you trembling? Uh, no, Missy. Natty fine. Natty old. Uh, where's my brother, Manasseh? He go hunting in forest. He no care about dangers. Your mother, she call him brave. But some say he not brave, he mad. Hush! You know my mother doesn't allow such talk. What were you whispering about when I came in? Nothing. Miss Lois, she tell you nothing. Lois? I... I it was just a story. Tell me. Natty? <sighs> I'll pinch you if you don't tell me. Tell me. Oh. Prudence, you're hurting her. So, she's only an Indian. An Indian? Is Natty Of course she is. Can't you tell? Look at her skin. Can't you smell the difference? Prudence. Oh, it's all right. She doesn't mind, do you, Natty? Mm. 
Otherwise, you get one of these, don't you? Oh. Prudence, stop that! Prudence, our mother wants you. Pastor Tapau is here. Very well, sister. Matty? Hmm? Why is Faith always so sad? Ah. She's step on spell, too. One that brings pain here. In her heart? Do you mean that... Lois, Mother says you are to join us for prayers. Come quickly. And look down upon this godly woman, Grace Hickson, O Lord, and bless her house and all who dwell in it. We seek your blessing upon Manasseh, the son and heir of this family. Give him guidance, O Lord. The long rambling prayer of the pastor, which had begun by asking for blessings on all possible combinations of Christian men, and for succor in all possible cases of spiritual need, took on a more personal note towards the end, when he put up a supplication for each member of the household, according to his notions of their wants. And we pray too for the maiden from another land, who hath brought the errors of that land as a seed with her, even across the great ocean, and who is letting even now the little seeds shoot up into an evil tree, in which all unclean creatures may find shelter. How just like Pastor Tapau, cousin? He seems a good man, although I like not his prayers. No. Well, not so well as the prayers I used to hear at home. Mother says thy home was with the ungodly. <gasps> Nay, don't look so. It was not I that said it. I'm none so fond of praying myself, nor of Pastor Tafau for that matter. But faith cannot abide him, and I know why. Shall I tell thee, Cousin Lois? No, if I am to know it, then faith will tell me herself. I hast heard there was a... Disagreement between Pastor Tapau and another man last year? No. Pastor Tapau had to ask for this other man to be removed from office because he disagreed with many of the things Pastor Tapau said. This other man's name was Mr. Nolan. Oh. Ask Faith where young Mr. Nolan has gone to, and she'll tell thee more, if she can stop herself crying. Hush. Oh, and Manasseh says he has had another vision. Prudence. I hope you are not speaking disrespectfully of our brother. No, sister, I'm not. Manasseh said he dreamt last night that birds could speak and bring us messages from heaven, like angels. And he said he had converse with an owl in his dream, who told him Mr. Nolan would return to Salem. <gasps> I thought you'd like to know. Faith. Are you awake? I, I am that. Twas an old custom, back home, when you couldn't sleep to count sheep. Only you had to use the old shepherd's words for it. Wantherum, Tootherum, Cockerum, Cutherum, Shatherum, Shatherum, Wineberry, Wigtail, Tarrydill, Dell. Have you heard of such as that? No. We used to do some silly things. Hast heard of apple bobbing? That's good fun. You have to get an apple from a barrel of water without using your hands, only your mouth. I got one once. Only I had to put my head right under it to do it. It was on Halloween we did that. I remember someone told me if you then stand facing a mirror and eat the apple, then you'll see your future husband standing over your shoulder. And he'll reach out and take the apple from you. <gasps> Did you try it? <laughs> Such a trick they played on me. I went upstairs to look in the mirror, thinking there was no one in the room. And as I bit into the apple, three of them jumped out from behind me. They gave me such a fright. But if you do it serious, does it work? 
Well, some say it do. There's other ways too. You can look into a brook at the stroke of midnight and you'll see his face there. Ah! 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 Prudence? Ah! Ah! Are you away? Cousin Lois may go out and meet Satan by the brookside if she will, but, but I will tell Pastor Tapo. Prudence! Her eyes are staring, but she's not awake. I would rather never be but at all and see a creature over my shoulder and feel his touch. Wake up, Prudence. Stop this. Look over her shoulder there. I see him stretching over for that half-bitten apple. She's conjured him. But there's no one there, Prudence. You're imagining things. She can't hear you. She's still asleep, though her eyes are open. Oh, she does this sometimes. Cousin Lois is an English witch. Prudence. Prudence, wake up. What's the matter? Prudence, was that you? Oh, she was having a bad dream. Uh, uh, I would rather never be wed at all. Uh, what is it, my maid? Uh, she's dreaming. I'll stay by her till she's calm. She'll be all right, Mother. See? She's fallen back to sleep already. Oh, and I've just got the baby settled. Oh, no. So Grace withdrew, eventually soothing the baby back to a fitful sleep. But in the remaining hours of the night, the whole course of life in that house was changed. For in the morning, the baby was found dead in his cot. Lois? Crying? Only a little. I don't wonder thou grievest after the baby. Though my mother says one should not forget it is God who gives and God who takes away. And so it is God's will. And to grieve too deeply is not fitting. But, Lois, perhaps this is not the time to talk of marriage. But soon I wish to speak to thee. Cousin Manasseh, I have to tell you, I, I don't want to be married. I would rather not. That is well spoken. I should not like to take to wife a maiden ready to jump at wedlock. But let me tell you truly now, I, I can love you as a friend, but never as a wife. It is borne in upon me. I see it as in a vision, that thou must be my spouse, and no other man's. Well, Manasseh... You ought to know there is a young man in Barford, huh? Hugh, Hugh Wickham, who has asked me to marry him. I, I am as good as betrothed. Yesterday, when I sat down to read and opened the Holy Bible, I saw no letters printed on the page, but the type of some unknown language. And its meaning was whispered into my soul. It was Mary Lois. Mary Lois. It is the Lord's will, Lois. And thou canst not escape it. Well, I do not acknowledge it to be the Lord's will, Manasseh. The voice said unto me, Mary Lois. And I said, I will, Lord. But the voice, as you call it, has never spoken such a word to me. Oh, Lois, it will speak. And then thou wilt obey, as Samuel did. No, indeed I cannot. These are the fancies of your own brain, huh? not God's will. No, I cannot marry thee, Manasseh. Oh. I cannot. <sighs> the winter of 1691 was exceptionally harsh, and the township of Salem was cut off from all contact with the outside world by deep snow. In the stillness of this night season, a white mist would form, and creep nearer and nearer to the windows every evening in strange shapes, making the unreal seem real, while the minutes spun into hours to the same slow beat. On one such evening, there came a visitor to the house. Uh, is Mistress Hickson at home? Faith, mm -hmm. Mr. Nolan is in the outer room. He asked for my aunt, but she's left us now for the prayer meeting, and Manasseh's out hunting. 
<laughs> well, go to him, or he'll think he's not welcome. <laughs> Old Indian woman, this and a here and there, treat her like a child. But old Indian woman knows. She know how to call. And when she does, white man must come. The old Indian, she spoke not a word, and white man, he heard nothing with his ears. Lois, Mr Nolan says you are to join us to pray for baby Joseph. Come. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mr. Nolan, sir, you must go. We are still in grief, and, and doubtless my cousin needs more quiet than she's had today. Of course. Oh, perchance I may call again tomorrow, Miss Lewis? If you wish. Lois? Why did you send him away? I should have been better directly. But he's coming again. He asked to return tomorrow. But not to see me. Oh, hush, hush thee, my bird. Lois, where is my mother? At a prayer meeting at Pastor Tapau's. She has taken prudence. Faith has left the room this minute. I will call her. Lois, the time is going by, and I cannot wait much longer. The visions come thick upon me. Only this night... I saw in my dream the spirit come and offer thee two lots. And the colour of one was white, like a bride's. And the other was black and red, which means a violent death. And when thou didst choose the latter, suddenly thou wert as a corpse three days old. Oh, Lois, I would fain spare thee. Give me thy hand. Oh. Give it to me. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, it is so white, so soft. And the voice said unto me, Mary Lois. What means this? Oh, Aunt. Loose thy hands. What means this speak? Oh, my cousin seeks me in marriage. Thee? It is preordained. The spirit has brought her to me as my bride. Spirit? Oh, an evil spirit then to choose a stranger like this girl. Another godly maiden from thine own people. Aunt Hickson, I've told Manasseh I am already betrothed to a young man of my own village. Oh, the Lord hath overruled it. You shall be wed to me. It is ordained. Hush, Manasseh. Nay, I will not. If she does not obey divine will, she deserves her fate. My fate? You will die. And I will not lift a hand to help you. Oh, alas, my son, not bewitched. And I cannot marry him. I cannot. Oh, quiet, child. He is becoming disturbed again in his mind. I have seen signs of late. Manasseh, come on, my son. Look, come away now. Come and Grace Hickson took Manasseh away and began to keep a careful watch over him. At the same time, Faith's spirits seemed to sink even further, despite the frequent visits by Mr. Nolan. He cares not for me. Hush, hush. He cares more for Lois's little finger than for my whole body. She has bewitched him. Oh, curse her, curse her! Ah, she in the next room. What can I do, Nanny? How can nest be built when other birds got all the feathers? Wait till the Indian can send other bird flying away. It was now the end of February. The land was still held in the grip of winter, and Salem was turned ever more in upon itself. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Oh, mother, what's happened? Oh, what is it? Daughters, Satan is abroad. I have this very hour seen him afflict two innocent children, contorted into such shapes. Oh, where are they? Hester and Abigail Tapa. 
And when the godly father began to pray, their howlings were like wild beasts. Truly, Satan is at loose amongst us. We are called to prayer, every one of us. The whole of Salem is to gather at the meeting house. Where's Lois? She must come too. Come. Lois, Lois, Lois! Oh, Father Tapau says last night he heard a terrible sound, as though a heavy body was being dragged through the house by some strong power. And then it was thrown against his bedroom door. And when he started to pray, a shriek went up that made his hair stand on end. Prudence! Prudence! If you run on ahead, we will lose you in the crowd! This morning, he said all the crockery in the house was found smashed in a heap on the kitchen floor. And as soon as he began to ask a blessing on the meal, Abigail and Hester cried out as if someone was pinching them. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us all! Satan is of a truth let loose! And it is clear that devils with most horrid operations have broken in upon us. Oh, heaven protect us. And so, let us beseech him that their power may be restrained. Amen to that. Oh, it is a terrible strength. I have witnessed it. Two years ago in the city of Boston, the children of that religious and blessed man, Mr. Goodwin, were bewitched by an Irish witch. And there was no end to their torments. Help us, Lord. At one time, they would fly like geese and be carried with an incredible swiftness, having just their toes upon the ground. Yet at other times, by the hellish devices of the witch, they could not stir without limping. For by means of an invisible chain, she hampered their limbs. And the devils that possessed them caused them to whistle and sing and yell in a discordant and hellish fashion. Whence comes that sound? Satan is among you. Look to yourselves. child, if you can, the name of the witch who is subjecting you to this torture. Speak in the name of the Lord. What did she say? She spoke a name. What was it? Speak again, child. What name did you say? Oh, are you sure, child? She named... Lois Barclay. Where is she? Lois Barclay. Yet let her show herself. Here she is. Bring the accused witch near to this poor suffering child of Christ. Art thou Lois Barclay? You know I am. Prudence, why are you doing this? said an unkind word to you? English witch! Prudence! English witch! Look, you don't know what you're saying, do you? You threw me down only this morning and turned my arm black and blue. But I didn't! Oh. 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 I was not near you, Prudence. Don't look in her eyes. She can strike thee with a look. Oh. I've heard she could make the poor Hicks and baby sleep or howl in turn. Oh. Oh. He died suddenly, though it was never clear how. Oh. Oh. Aunt! Will you not speak for me, Aunt? It is for God to judge whether thou art a witch, Lois, not for me. Manasseh! It is divine will. I warn thee, it would come to this. Faith! Faith, will you not speak? (laughs) Is there no one? Alas! Alas! 
She's falling. Quick, catch her. And bind her. Then she'd fly out from the room. Orson's oh. witch. None shall save thee when thou art brought up for a witch. Cousin Lois may go out and meet Satan by the brookside. He cares more for Lois's little finger than for my whole body. She has bewitched him. Curse her! English witch. English witch. And thou wert even as a corpse, three days old. Ungodly. 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 And you are charged with the sin of witchcraft. As witnessed by these your victims, Abigail Tapau, Hester Tapau, Prudence Hickson. Step forward, Lois Barclay. Do you confess to the charge of which you are accused? I am no witch, sir. Prudence! Stop it! Make it stop! Stop! Stop it, Prudence! All of you, stop! My shepherd is the living Lord. No thing, therefore I need. In pastures fair with waters gone. The accused is to stand in the shape of a cross, with her hand stretched out, and thus her evil power will be made weak and disappear. Wherever you be on God's earth, Lois, I will come for thee. I will. I will come for thee. 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 We are come to exhort you to confess your great and manifold sin. Where am I? You're in Salem jail, condemned for a witch. She's been out on a devilish ride all night long, Douglas. If you will confess, there may yet be balm in Gilead. But I am not a witch. I am not a witch. <laughs> She is weeping. They say no witch can weep tears. Even her own family have borne witness against her. Let us try one last test. Have Grace Hickson speak to her. She may yet succeed in bidding her to confess. My heart misgives me. And yet it would be the devil's way to conceal his evil in such a fair and seeming innocent. Let Grace Hickson be sung. Lois Barclay, did I ever do you any harm? Uh, are you there, Aunt? Answer me. Did I ever do you any harm? No. No, you did not. I did you no harm, though I never rightly knew why you came to us. Oh, I was sent by my mother on her deathbed. Did any of mine ever wrong you? No. Well, not till Prudence said... Oh, Aunt, do you think I am a witch? Wiser than I, godlier than I have said it. But, oh, Lois, he was my firstborn. Loose him from the demon, I beg you. But I know I am not. Yet I am to die. Aunt, <laughs> don't let them hang me. Hush, for shame. This afternoon I have bound my firstborn with strong cords. He is so frenzied. Oh, look. 
I am a proud woman, God forgive me. And I never thought to kneel to any save the one God above. But now I kneel at your feet to beg you to release my children. But especially my son Manasseh from the spells you have put upon them. Lois, hearken to me and I will pray to the Almighty for you. I never did any wrong. How can I undo it? How can I? Oh, curse you for a witch, Lois Barclay. And may you burn in hell for the evil you have brought upon my family. And I summon you to meet me before the judgment seat and answer for what you have done to those who took you in and gave you shelter when you came as an orphan and were homeless. Aunt, I will meet you there at the very feet of the Almighty God and may he have mercy on you. Witch! Ask mercy for thyself. I speak. Morris Barclay is convicted of the sin of witchcraft and condemned to death. May the Lord have mercy on her soul. Have mercy. Amen. 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 A month later, Captain Holderness and Hugh Wickham landed in Boston and came to find Lois, to take her back home to Barford. They were led to the grave where she lay at rest. Hugh Wickham shook the dust off his feet in quitting Salem, returned home and lived a bachelor all his long life after. Lois the Witch was dramatised by Sally Hedges from a story by Elizabeth Gaskell. It starred Elizabeth Spriggs as Mrs Gaskell, Carolyn Backhouse as Lois, Sandra Birkin as Grace and Amy Draper as Prudence. Other parts were played by Heather Emanuel, Susan Jeffrey, Richard Avery, Jonathan Wyatt, Andrew Harrison, Stephen Tomlin and Anna Keane. The producer was Nigel Bryant. Sir was Nigel Bryant. Sir was Nigel Bryant. Sir was Nigel Bryant. Sir was Nigel Bryant.